Go. We're glad you could join us today on this seven topic series titled The Purpose of Jesus Incarnation. Hi, my name is Sean and I'd like to uh, welcome you to today's discussion. I'd also like to welcome my co-presenter, James. Hi, Sean. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello, James. Great to have you on board. Pretty I'm excited here. about uh, what we have to share today. And um, we hope that uh, our viewers and listeners will be uh, blessed by uh, this video that we are preparing today. Um, also, I just want to note that in this series, our goal is to challenge um, our misconceptions and to deepen our understanding of the purpose of why God came to our world in the person of Jesus Christ. Today, we pick up on the series with topic number three, which is Jesus came to bring God and man together. James, can I invite you to pray for us, please? Sure, thank you, let's pray. Our loving Father, we thank you so, so much. Before you create all this world, you already have a plan for all the universe. Mm. And you know, everything will, what, whatever will happen, you know everything before it's happened. Mm. And you already made your plan. And we suffer so often, Christian, any denomination will uh, accusing you for the pain, for the suffering, because they said, there is, if there is a God who have power, who have, who know everything, why didn't he stop it? And everybody get confused about it because they don't know about the great controversy in your family in heaven, how the devil, uh, Lucifer, he become a devil and break this peace with you in heaven. Mm. And also he take one third of the angel with him. By, and the Bible said by his tail, that means that mean by his lie. He lied to them about you. And now you have to, to make a person, a body, and you go into it, according to Hebrew chapter 10, verse 5, to come down to this planet Earth to save us, to explain to us about the accusation of the devil. As my brother Sean will take this, um, this part one today about what you have done to come, uh, what you did to come down to this place on earth to explain to us about the plan of salvation or to reveal your righteousness. And we thank you so much for that. And be with Sean, Lord, and put your word into his mouth and open everybody's eyes, which um, anyone who will watch this uh, video, they might see clearly and understand uh, what kind of God you are. You you still a loving God for everybody. You still love your good children, your bad children. You love everybody. Thank you so much for for to open our eyes, and thank you so much to be with us today. And uh, in in your name, Father, I pray to I pray to you about about what you have done, and thank you so much again in the name of Jesus Christ, our our Savior and God and Redeemer. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brother James, for that uh, that prayer to start us off in the right way. As you might have heard in the prayer, James said that this will be part one. So due to, you know, not trying to be on there too long and, and you know, to those who are, are uh, uh, attention uh, challenged, uh, uh, we want to, you know, keep it as brief as we can, but also give you and provide as much information as we can. So this will be, as I said, topic number three, and this topic is titled, Jesus Came to Bring God and Man Together, part one, okay? Part we, part two will follow in the next couple of days. So as we wanna start off, I just wanna make, just start off by saying that uh, it was transgression of God's law, the law of love, the law of love that has brought woe and death to our planet. And in case you are a little bit um, uh, like the Bereans and you want to see some Bible scriptures that say or talk about that, just 
Just read uh, James chapter one, verses 13 through 15. Uh, verse 15 says that when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin is conceived, it bringeth forth death. So that's a clear uh, Bible verse that uh, demonstrates uh, or explains the, the words that were just shared. Um, this, um, every, every, um, the origin of, of, of sin, um, was, um, with our first parents, Adam and Eve. And because of their sin, um, we have been separated from heaven. Um, we understand in Isaiah 59 verse two, it says your sins have separated you from your God. Um, so that man can no longer have communion with his creator. And even though sin had separated us, we still were not left in hopelessness. Our world was not left in hopelessness. We read in Genesis chapter three and verse 15, where it says that I will put enmity between your seed and his seed. These are the first words of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, the plan of redemption that has been unfolding for 6,000 years. Um, and also we can read in Galatians 3.16. James, do you mind to read that for us, please? Yes, I can read that, yes. And before I just read it, and something come to my mind about the transgression of God's law in the times of Adam and Eve. Mm. And uh, so many Christians probably might ask themselves, they said, um, if God knows Adam and Eve will eat this fruit, why he put this tree in in the, in the first place in the Garden of Eden, you know? But one thing they have to understand: when God put the tree, good and evil, in it, it, God said everything He made is good. But why it's evil? I believe because the devil was there, right? right? But what did happen? And when God put this tree over there, God did not put it before sin. He put it after sin. Oh. You know, after sin, because sin already started in heaven. Yes. You remember that? Yes. yes. After sin, Good he put point. this tree in the garden. But when he put this tree in the garden, is to protect them. You see, not to test them. Right. Is to protect them. But uh, unfortunately, because um, uh, God knows what will happen, but he, he let it happen because he knows there is something good will happen. After that, everybody will know the, the, uh, what, what Lucifer have done, and everybody will know he was right. Even today, there is so many so many Christians did not know God was right all the times. But anyway, I just want to present this bit. Uh, and now I will read in uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 16, in Good News uh, Translation. He said, now... God made his promise to Abraham and to his descendant. The scripture does not use the plural descendants, many meaning many people, but a singular descendant, meaning one person only, namely Christ. Amen. Amen. I love there, again, <laughs> there again in Galatians, we have scriptural evidence of the uh the plan of uh salvation that would come and be fulfilled through jesus christ in order to bring uh man and his creator back in harmony uh post the fall so so thank you for that james um even though there had been a great gulf between uh man and god um and our communion was cut off so to say but God had promised through Christ, earth again would be linked with heaven. Amen. Amen. What a promise. Um, in Genesis chapter 27 and 28, we, um, we read of a, a Bible story about uh, the patriarch Isaac, uh, the son of Abraham, that was deceived by his wife and his son Jacob in order to secure the birthright from Jacob's twin brother, Esau. But this story is more than a story about deception and tre tre uh, treachery, but also about God's plan to unite man and God. 
Mm. Um, in, in this story, um, after his sin, meaning Jacob's sin of deceiving Esau, Jacob fled his father's house or his father's home, his, his residence. He left his family and his friends and his familiarity behind. And he found himself alone in a field and he was sad. And there he lay down his head on the earth to sleep. As he slept, he was shown a vision of a ladder that led upward to the very gates of heaven. And upon it, angels of God were going up and down, or we could say descending and ascending. And what he saw in the vision was a way by which a sinner, us, can be restored to communion with God. Mm, amen. Wow. Very, very uh, uh, exciting, very um, uh, stressless, you know, because we've been we've been separated from God and there's not been much communication after the fall, but God promised that we would be reunited. And again, he's given us an emblem of the way or a symbol of how we be, how we would be re reunited with with God. And that was through Christ, because we know that that la that ladder represents Christ, that those angels were going up and down on or ascending and descending. Um, what a promise that we will be restored to communion with God. But the okay. one, but the one, the one who breaks this communion is the devil himself. Mm. He doesn't want us to have anything with God. He wants to de deceive us and destroy us. That is his plan. Yes. <laughs> But praise, praise God, he didn't leave us alone. Amen. And, uh, he didn't Amen. abandon us after we had eaten the forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Amen. And, uh, and so this mystic ladder, which was seen in his dream, represented Jesus, the Savior. The only medium of which communication between God and man, the only medium that which would restore the communication between God and man. This is the same figure, the, the ladder, the ladder. This is the same figure referred to in his conversation with Nathaniel, with Nathaniel, which means Jesus' conversation with Nathaniel found in John chapter one, verse 51, where he said, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. Again, that's John 1, 51. The only way to God is Christ. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. So many different persuasions, many different uh, denominations who don't recognize the true nature and the divinity of Jesus Christ and only acknowledge him as a teacher or a prophet may, um, uh, may not under understand the 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 brevity of the choice of not recognizing who Christ is could uh, bring about of their eternal life. So Jesus is saying that he's the only way to the Father. He's that community, he's that ladder that we must go that you know the angels are descending and ascending on and that uh, he's the one who brings us back into communion uh, with the Father. And yes, sir. When Jesus Christ was, was here on this planet Earth, there is no one between. Because he himself is God. Yes. You know, Good point. He, he, he just come in a he make a body, he come in his body to be for us to be able to see him face to face and live with him. The same like he did with Abraham. Mm. You see? But there is no one between. Abraham not need anyone to between him and God. And Moses don't need anyone between him and God. The people of Israel need someone that is Moses, you know. But now we understand that we don't need anyone, you know, because God himself, we can have this communication together now. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes. You know, God always intended to be one with his people. Good friendship, yes. Yeah, it was us that chose to separate ourselves from God. Mm. And it is us, as I think it's uh, in, um, in the Old Testament, where, uh, and I think it's uh, Deuteronomy 
six and around there where it says that uh, Moses came down and he was shining and the children of Israel had heard the voice of God and they, they feared him, you know, and, uh, go just 20. Yeah. Yes. Exodus 20. That's it. And they said, and they said to not Deuteronomy. So, so pardon me, Exodus 20. Thank you, brother. And, um, they said, yes, we will do all that God says, but just don't let God talk to us. So right <laughs> then and there, they wanted someone to be their mediator, you know, in between. in between them and God, where God wanted to have communion with them face to face. So, man, what a what a great insight. So thank you for that. And um, also, you know, we read about the promise of uh, who Jesus is also in Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. And we will allow our readers to read that on themselves to understand who he is clearly and what the Bible says about his, uh, his uh, who he was. Hmm. Um, also. I mean, even in the New Testament, if you read in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23, where it reads, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Hmm. So Jesus, which we know from John 1, 1, was the word that was made flesh. And then also we read in Matthew 1, verses 23, where it says, his name would be called Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us, which also goes back to the verse that I just said, Isaiah chapter nine and verse six, which said with his name would be wonderful a counselor, everlasting father, mighty God, you know, prince of peace, you know. So we get we're starting to understand who God is, who Jesus is as well. But also we understand that his purpose for coming was to unite and bring us back together with the father in in uh, john chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 uh in the beginning was was uh god in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god himself mm -hmm. and then when you go to verse 14 the word which is god became flesh and dwell among us amen so, so clear and yeah, yeah, that, that's crystal brother <laughs> crystal clear and, yeah. and always as we do in in, in each of our topics and all of our videos, we do invite anyone who um, would like any comments to obviously reach out to us who has any questions about where we get our information or um, or they would want to give us encouragement, which, you know, mm -hmm. we would need and, 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 and pray, pray for us. We would we love that. But also, if you want to reach us, you can reach us at um, uh, Let's Talk About God 3 at Gmail dot com. And I'll share that a little bit more before we uh, conclude today's um, today's um, topic or part one, I should say. Um, also, I just want to continue to support how Jesus came to reveal the Father to us to bring God and man back together. And I want to read it from one of my, my favorite Christian author. And this is found in a book called Desire of Ages. And I want to read this quote. And uh, this quote uh, reads... Um, by coming to dwell with us, Jesus was to reveal God to both men and angels. Now, that is a that is a probably a comment that many people say, what? Why would he want to reveal to the angels uh, who he was? And we have to understand that angels were also deceived in heaven uh, by Lucifer. And that's what James was talking about from the beginning when sin when um when the promise of the redeemer from Genesis 3:15 and Galatians 3:16 was coming it was be, was after sin because in heaven satan lucifer or he was called lucifer in heaven the light bearer but then when he became he was called satan the dragon of old the old serpent called the devil he deceived them and he sinned against god by uh rebelling and also accusing him and also lying about his character and misrepresenting his character. So Jesus came to reveal to the angels as well, who may have had questions about God's character um, and about how he wants to run his government and to man. And if you want to read, and uh, have a Bible verse that fortifies that, you can read Ephesians chapter one, verse nine and 10 and Ephesians chapter three, verse nine and 10 just to name a few. And that's two that are very close to each other in proximity in the Bible. 
so relatively close and easy to find. And uh, Jesus, he was the word of God. Um, God's thought made audible, as I continue with the quote. Uh, in his prayer for his disciples, he says, I have declared unto them thy name. We know that that his name is his character. Just as he said to Moses in Exodus 34, when Moses asked to, to see him and to know his name, he says, he said that he was merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundance in goodness. God started to describe to Moses his character mm -hmm. of who he is. And um, we should we should too also see God in this light that he has revealed to the patriarchs of old and also as he is made manifest through Jesus Christ to us for today. Um, the quote continues, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Be not alone, I mean, but not alone for his earthborn children was this revelation given. Our little world is a lesson book of the universe. Again, we want to provide scriptures for that, and we would like you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9, if you want to know more about that. It says our world was a, um, uh, what does it say? In a, it mean, the word means theater, a spectacle. It says our, our little world was a spectacle, and that word for spectacle means theaton, which we get, where we get our word today for theater. And uh, that's, again, found in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. So God's wonderful purpose of grace, the mystery of redeeming love, is the theme into which angels desire to look. Oh, man, this is more, more proof about how God came to make um, himself known, not only to, um, you know, the descendants of Adam and Eve, but also to angels in heaven as well, too. And it says the angels desire to look, and it will be their study throughout endless ages. We will never... We will never know all about God. We will continue from eternity to eternity to be uh, showed the manifestations of God's character. And we will continue to be awed. And that's why in Revelation, it says, they said, holy, holy, holy. Man, God is so good. God is so good. And it says, yes. And but there's an, only, only, uh, something as well everybody should know. The only way to God is Christ. Yeah. Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. Yeah. John 14, verse 6, Isaiah 9, verse 6, and Matthew 21, verse 3. Yes. Amen. Thank you for mm. highlighting that. Mm. And, it's, and then we continue with the quote. It says, it will be seen that the glory shining in the face of Jesus is the glory of self-sacrificing love. In the light from Calvary, it will be seen that the law of self-renouncing love is the law of life for earth and heaven. And that the love which seeketh not her own has its source in the heart of God. And that is in the meek and lowly one is manifested the character of him who dwelleth in light, which no man can approach unto. I, I I think that this is a it's a marvelous quote when when we when we read it. I just I just want to read that last bit again because I don't think that I was very clear on that. And I just wanted to read it where it says, in the light from Calvary, it will be seen that the law of self-renouncing love is the law of life for earth and heaven. That's God's law, love. And that's God's character, love. Yes. I love your I love your uh, your comment uh, your um, uh, what do you call the this quote. the quote you have been uh, using yes I, I, when I look at this he said I have declared unto them thy name yes. merciful and gracious long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth now if God Himself is merciful. For him to do something bad to his children, he have to be merciless. <laughs> that is a good point for people to see. And also, God said, He save us. He save everybody through grace by grace. He save yeah. us by grace through faith. He said, He gracious. He's gracious, God. <laughs> you know, 
He never without grace, grace, you know, and also long suffering, abandon of in goodness, you know, and truth. God, if God uh, do some something bad, he have to be out outside the truth, you know. There's many ways you can look at it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll continue. I will, I will finish uh, this quote. In the light from the Calvary, it will be seen the law of self renouncing love, in the law is the law of life for earth in heaven, that the love which seeketh not our own. I love that, love that seeketh not her own. If you want to know a, a definition of love, read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It gives a beautiful, it gives a, 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 under, a, a, a an explanation that we don't even understand, but as we read it more and more, the Holy Spirit will impress it upon our hearts. And he calls it seeketh not our own. It is, it has, that type of love has its source in the heart of God. In the mm -hmm. heart of God. If, if, if we lived on a planet that seeketh not his own, but the love of others, oh, we would be in such harmony. Everyone would call each other brother and sister. We will be one big family. Amen. One big family. And then I just want to finish the last little bit. It says, and that in the meek and lowly one, obviously, which is Jesus Christ, is manifested the character of him, God, who dwelleth in the light which no man can approach. Mm. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ, as James said, and we're just about to get into it, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ coming into this body, covering his divinity, we would not be able to 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 endure face to face we will not be able to endure <laughs> yeah, when god yes. came to this earth to dwell amongst us exactly and, and and with that in mind i just want to say james could you could you read the next bible verse for us which is uh found in hebrews chapter 10 verses 5 through 7 please yes uh verse 5 said wherefore when he come into the world he said sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not uh, but a body has thou prepared me. You know, God himself prepared in for himself a body. Mm. And then he come to this body on this planet Earth. Yes, that's it. Uh, verse 6, yes, he said, in, in burn offering and sacrifice for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. In other words, no approve. Verse 7, then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the, of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Amen, amen. Amen, well this, done. This, well this, this is something that, I, honestly, I hope that our, our, our viewers and listeners will send us an email on, as we gave our email address before, which is let's talk about God 3 at gmail.com, because this verse itself needs more explanation. It needs more time, but we yes, cannot yes. go through it thoroughly with you. But I want you to understand that Jesus prepared a body for himself, as I was saying earlier, to cover his divinity so that we could endure his presence. When Moses met him at the burning bush in the mountain, he covered his divinity and shrouded it in the bush. When the, when, when the Israelites, the Hebrews left, the Egyptian bondage, he, he, he manifested himself through a pillar of light, a pillar of fire, and then a pillar of cloud because it cannot endure. Imagine the glory the divinity, or the, and the divinity of God being presented to us. We couldn't even endure the glory that shone in the face of Moses when he came off top the mountain. The, the, the Hebrew said to him, please cover your face. It's too mm -hmm. bright. We can't endure it. Imagine the two angels at the tomb of Jesus that were there, that when they were manifested themselves, that the soldiers fell as dead. They couldn't even endure the glory of the angels. Imagine if the glory of the Father, which is Jesus and the Father are the same. He says, me and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Imagine if his glory was not garbed or, or shrouded in a body. Imagine who would be able to stand. None. Mm. None. In these words, in, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5 through 7, is announced the fulfillment 
of the purpose that had been hidden from eternal ages. It announced that Christ was about to visit our world and become incarnate. Mm. Incarnate. That's, that's the Bible verse John 1 and verse 14 where it says the word was flesh and the, and the flesh dwelt among us. That was it. Jesus became flesh and he came and dwelt among us. Um, I hope that the over over um, arching um, um, theme for this uh, Bible or Bible sharing or or, or or Bible video is coming across, which is that Jesus came to uh, bring God and man together, together. And I want to just say that that Jesus came to reveal the true character of God. That's part of how he was united us. Because as we know, Satan told lies to angels in heaven. You can read it in, in Revelation 12, verse 4, where it says they were deceived by, the, by his tail. That's lies. And then he didn't change his M.O. He continued to operate under the same M.O. He came to earth and he deceived Adam and Eve by lying as well. By making them think something that was not true about God. And he hasn't changed today either. For those in the world who don't know who Jesus is, for those who deny who Jesus is, for those who say that there is no God, the devil is doing his job because he's misrepresenting who God is, even so far that we are believing his lies. The devil is the one who, who, who does all of his dirty work and then turns around and points the finger to God and makes us think that it's God. But it is not. The devil is misrepresenting God and we have bought his lies, hook, line, and sinker. We need to read God's word. We need to invite and pray for the Holy Spirit to give us understanding. And, and I think it's 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3. It says, no man called Jesus a curse by the Holy Spirit, and no man will call Jesus Lord without the Holy Spirit. That's a paraphrase from me. You know, sometimes I don't remember all the Bible verses, but I've given you the Bible verse, which is 1 Corinthians 12 and 3. You can read it in its fullness. And I just want to continue on with this uh, theme about how Jesus came to, to bring God and man together. As I just said earlier, Jesus came to reveal the true character of God and to demonstrate to humanity, that's us, that we had no reason to fear God. And, and what he was trying to do was unite us, God and humanity, in love. He wants us to know how much his father loved us. John 3, 16, one of the most Famous Bible verses that God so so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever so oh yeah, whoever so believe it will not perish but have everlasting life. He gave God get God gave that's the that's the self renouncing love. God gave. Also Jesus, Jesus came, and uh, and and in John uh, twelve verse thirty two. He said, and if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And obviously we've said this in some of our earlier topics and, and, and recordings is that that word all is in, is in I is in um, that word men is in italics. So it's been added. The verse should read or well, the last part of the verse which should read will draw all unto me. Because at the cross. Satan's mask was ripped off. The angelic beings saw him for who he was. And they made their choice to say, just and righteous are you, O Lord. It's us who haven't made our choice, haven't decided what's happening in the conflict of the ages or the great controversy between Christ and Satan. James, did you want to say anything? Or did you do, or, no, 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 you go ahead. Okay. And then also I want to read Colossians chapter one and verse 20, where it says, through the son, Jesus, God decided to bring the whole universe back to himself. The whole universe. He didn't say planet Earth and human beings. He says the whole universe, because the whole universe is actually looking down to see how God deals with the problem of sin. Hmm. Is God the way that Satan has been portraying him? Love me or I'll kill you. 
No, God is not like that. God says, hey, I'm going to show you who I am. I'm going to put myself on trial, which is uh, Romans chapter three, uh, verse four, which says, may you win your case when you are judged or wait, or may other translation says, or may you win your um, case when you go into court. God has revealed himself to us and in the person of Jesus Christ to bring us back together. And instead of saying, I'll kill you if you don't love me, he says, choose. He says, choose. How many husbands out there who will be listening to this said to their wives, marry me or I'll kill you? And how many wives that may be listening would have married a person that said that to them, but yet was claiming to love them? It was your choice whether or not you wanted to marry God. I mean, marry your husband. And it's our choice, our choice if we want to marry ourselves, unite ourselves to God as well. Jesus came to unite man and God to clear up all misunderstandings about the person of God and his character and his government. And we have the truth. Now it's up to us to make the choice. And then I want to say that um, Christ's death on the cross, as you heard me say earlier, was for angels too. And I, and I, and I refer to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, and Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. All right? Um, so we can see that Lucifer's lies and his deceptions and all his accusations about God, which started in heaven, was, was not just for us after Adam and Eve fell, but it is for the entire universe to see the true nature of who God is, his true character. As Jesus said, I came and I showed them thy name. I've made you known to them. Now it's up to us to make Amen. our name. So um, let us, let us, let us um, just look at a few more, what maybe one more verse, and then we might um, wrap it up there and use the remaining bit of this topic for uh, part two. So my my next my next uh, Bible verse that I'd like to read or share with you is found in Second Corinthians chapter five verses seventeen through twenty one, and I'll just read that to you. This is my last Bible verse before we conclude uh, part one. And that's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 21. And that reads, anyone who is joined to Christ is a new being. I like that. I like that. And then it goes on to say, the old is gone. The new has come. Verse 18, all that is done by God, who through Christ changed us from enemies into his friends and gave us the task of making others his friends. Oh, and once then, we get to know who God is, mm. once we understand his character, once we understand how much he loves us, once we understand that Satan has lied to us and we can clearly see through the Holy Spirit who God is in Jesus Christ, he says, don't keep it for yourself. Mm. He says, don't keep it for yourself. He says, go and share with others. And what it says, uh, I, I, unfortunately, I couldn't, I didn't note the Bible translation that I used, but verse eight, 18 says to us that, that who through Christ changed us from enemies into his friends and gave us the task of making others his friends also. Amen. Go out and share. Go out. Go out and live a life that testifies to who you serve. Go out and live a life that testifies of the goodness of God, his mercy and his grace, and his everlasting love for his children. Amen. And Amen. Uh, we'll continue on that with verse 19, where it says, our message is that God was making all human beings his friends through Christ. God did not keep an account of their sins, he has given us the message which tells how he makes them his friends. Verse 20, here we are, then speaking for Christ as though God himself were making his appeal through us, through us. We are ambassadors for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And look, let's, let's be honest. Some of us have not been very good ambassadors. Some of us have misrepresented our fathers. 
because we still misunderstand who God is. We need to be like the Bereans. And I invite you to go over the Bible verses that we have shared thus far in part one of God came. I mean, Jesus came to bring man and God back together. Go and look at the Bible verse. Go study them for yourself. Send us an email and, 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 and challenge us as what we want to learn from you as much as we hope you are learning from us. Iron sharpens iron from the book of Proverbs. Let's sharpen each other together, my brothers and my sisters. Mm. And, um, and uh, to continue on from verse 20, it says, we plead on Christ's behalf. It says, let God change you from enemies into his friends. Verse 21 says, Christ was without sin, but for our sake, God made him share in our sin in order that in union, that means bringing us back together, putting us in harmony, in union with him, we might share the righteousness of God. Amen. 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 And my last little bit is that not only are we brought, as you heard me say earlier, not as, as we brought, are we brought together with God through Jesus Christ, but we are also to be ambassadors for Christ in the new life to others. In this new life, it says that the old nature born of blood and the will of the flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The old ways, the hereditary tendencies, the former habits must be given up, must be surrendered to God. The new birth that we receive in Christ Jesus it says consists in new motives, new motives, new tendencies, and we are to live a new life by the Holy Spirit. We have become partakers of divine nature in this new life. And in all our ways, we will give evidence of our relationship to Christ. Amen. 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 Um, before we just close or wrap up on, 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 on part one, I'd like to ask James if there's anything that you would like to uh, share or add or comment on uh, before we, we close. Um. I just I just love where you talking about um, uh, Second Corinthians chapter five verses seventeen to twenty one. I just make a, a little comment on that because uh, according to what I hear, what you just said, that what will happen when we you when we uni united united uh, ourselves in with union. Jesus Christ. I mean, in union with Him. What will happen, verse 17 said, anyone who is joined to Christ is a new being, new creature, right? That means nothing we can do by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Only Christ can transform our body, yeah, uh, yeah. transform our, you know, our minds and our characters. Yeah, character, character, we should say character is not a gift. Character is, um, in other words, Character is a victory. You know, when your conscience tells you something bad, you done something bad, and then you listen to what God said, you accept, and you do, you want to correct this bad thing to happen, that means your character uh, receives victory on your character. And mm -hmm. that character, if you continued like this, and that's the character you will take to heaven with you when Jesus Christ is coming. Verse 18, he said, all this is done by God. It's not by us. Nothing we can do. We just need to accept the gift of God. He said, who through Christ change us. Through Christ change us from enemy into his friend and gave us the task of making others his friend also. The same like what you're doing right now, Sean, my yeah. brother. And that's what we call born again. Born again is conversion. That is the work of the Holy Spirit, mm. which which uh, which product pro produce, which produce a change of attitude toward God and create a new cap a new capacity, sorry, a new capacity for knowing God. I, I mean. You know, but uh, uh, there's a lot we can share, but uh, only God can change us. Uh, we like an uh, enemy of God before, 
and he make us his friend. We didn't go to search for him. He searched for us. The same like you mentioned, John 3, 16. Before Jesus Christ come to this planet Earth, God so loved the world, you know? And sometimes now people say, now Jesus Christ have to go to God and present his blood to accept us. That does not make sense. That is pagan thought, you know? God never asking Jesus to bring his blood to him to accept us. He already accept us in John 3, 16. Mm. Before Jesus Christ come on this planet Earth, God so loves the world. Amen. And now we understand. <laughs> yes, amen. Praise the Lord. Self, you done very well, my brother. Amen. Self-praise be to God. Yeah, Self-renouncing love. Remember that word our, to our audience? Self-renouncing love. That, that's what it's all about. Self-renouncing love. Um, I just want to say um, um, thank you uh, for joining us today. Um, please join us next week as we continue with topic number three, that um, Jesus came to reveal, I mean, Jesus came to bring God and man together, part two. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, and may God bless you. We want to just close in a short prayer. Mm -hmm. Oh, Heavenly Father. We are so grateful for the example, the manifestation that Jesus Christ has given us of your character and love. And, and because of this, his desire was to heal and to restore and to unify and to unite us back with you, our Father. And in doing that, he gave us a perfect manifestation of who you are. He came to do away with all misconceptions and misunderstandings and, and distorted views of your character. Mm -hmm. And um, Hebrews chapter one is, I always refer to, I love that verse so much. It says that Jesus is the express, the exact image, the exact likeness of God. And he was created, and he came as we read in Hebrews chapter five verse, uh, uh, yeah, Hebrews chapter 10 verses five through seven. He came into this body. He came, he garbed and, 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 and covered his divinity. He left all his kingly garments. He gave it all up that we might get a glimpse, that we might see, that we might come to understand and, and to know who you are so that we can choose. Do we love the government of Satan, Satan or do we love the government and the God of the government, our creator, our heavenly father. Lord, I just pray that all will be blessed that listen or watch this video. And uh, I pray that um, your Holy Spirit will continue to bless me and James as we desire to share about your goodness mm -hmm. and your mercy and your grace. Bless us until we can meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you have any comments that you would like to make, if you'd like to send any supportive emails, if you'd like to add any additional Bible verses that have come to your mind, your heart from the Holy Spirit, please send it to us at let's talk about God three at gmail.com. Until then, may God bless you until we meet again. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs>